Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in to Outdoor and Door Texan. Today I'll be showing you how I smoke a Texas style brisket on my medium big green egg. This video is going to cover the whole journey from trimming and prep work to actually smoking and finally slicing and serving. Now what makes a brisket quote unquote Texas style is argued about constantly by award winning pit masters and backyard barbecue guys alike. Texas is a big state and there's quite a few ways to make a brisket tasty. And today I'm simply sharing my recipe that has worked for me with dozens of briskets in the past. If you have a different point of view, I welcome your feedback in the comments below. But just remember to be kind to others and hopefully we'll all come out of this learning something. Texans love their beef and Texas style brisket to me should focus heavily on making that specific ingredient shine with little assistance. We're not going to inject the meat. We're not going to cover it in a complicated barbecue rub, nor are we going to glaze it with a barbecue sauce. We're going to simply take a full pack of brisket, add a handful of ingredients, and then let a whole lot of smoke and patience take over. Head down to your local butcher shop or grocery store and pick up what's called a whole or packer brisket. Now a packer brisket has both the flat and point muscles, along with a good deal of fat keeping everything together. A helpful tip while at the butcher is to make sure to know the measurements of your smoker. Nothing's worse than showing up to your house with a pile of beef and realizing you're four inches too long for your setup. First step in prep is to position your brisket where the fat cap is facing up. And then, using a sharp knife, trim down that fat layer until it's about a quarter inch thick everywhere. It doesn't have to be a perfect measurement across the board, but following that rule of thumb will help reduce unnecessary amounts of fat while keeping just enough to render in the smoking phase. Once you're done with the fat cap trimming, flip your brisket over and find what looks like two seams of really hard waxy fat. This is called the decal. The decal is a layer of fat that connects the fatty point muscle with the leaner flat muscle. This is a type of fat that really won't render or do anything good for the meat while smoking, so feel free to trim away what you can. Beyond those two focuses, I don't mess with my brisket that much. If there's an odd hunk of meat that seems to throw off the overall shape of the brisket, just give it a quick trim. You simply want a smooth surface area for the smoke to roll over, but you don't have to get too crazy with it. Once done trimming, it's time to season the meat. And when I think of Texas brisket, I'm here for the beef and smoke, not much else. So we're gonna keep the rub very simple by using a mixture of kosher salt and coarse ground pepper. In a shaker or bowl, add half a cup of kosher salt with three quarters of a cup of coarse ground pepper. And remember, it must be coarse ground, not powdered. In my experience, using powdered ground pepper will leave you with a less than desirable bark. Cover your brisket with a thin layer of yellow mustard to act as a binder, and then shake out your rub evenly across the entire surface area of the brisket. And don't be shy in your application. There's a ton of meat here to season. Once your brisket's covered up and rubbed, you'll want to let it set in for a minimum of one hour to as much as overnight or even longer. Like so many things in barbecue, there's a lot of arguments about what time frame is best. But to me, it's more of a matter of what's easiest for timing. I typically rest mine in the fridge overnight just so that the meat has been prepped and I can then easily pull it out of the fridge when it's go time. I bring it up to room temperature without having to do much else and then toss it on the smoker when it's ready to go. Okay, it's now the next day and I've pulled the brisket out from the fridge. Before throwing it on the smoker though, I'm going to leave it out on this counter and let it come up to room temperature. Also, if you have any leftover rub, feel free to sprinkle a quick layer for touch-ups at this point. The last step in prep before we get to smoking is inserting the temperature probe. Take your probe and insert it into the thickest part of the brisket's flat muscle. Also, make sure to be careful that you're not setting it into a layer of fat. I'm using the Weber iGrill Mini, and these temp probes really are a vital bit of tech that I strongly suggest you to invest in if you don't have one already. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description below for where you can find this product and similar ones on Amazon. We'll be smoking this brisket for hours on end. And besides one crucial point in the process, you really shouldn't be opening the egg to check on your meat. Instead, we'll be cooking the brisket all based off of internal temp provided by this probe. With the brisket prepped and coming up to temp, let's head outside and build our fire in the egg. This cook could take longer than half a day, so make sure your egg is full of lump charcoal. Also, make sure to fill it where the bottom layer is predominantly large pieces so there's plenty of airflow. Finally, don't forget to add one or two chunks of dry smoking wood. I have two chunks of post oak buried just under that top layer. When lighting your fire, make sure to start a few different pieces on that top layer and then leave it alone and let it slowly spread from top to bottom. We'll be smoking this brisket indirect using a plate setter legs up, oriented where there's a single leg in the back. Finally, I'm also using a water pan that I'll fill about halfway. This not only helps keep the moisture up inside the egg dome, I've also found more importantly that the water acts as a heat sink, helping keep the temperature more stable in these longer cooks. We're aiming for a temp of 250 degrees Fahrenheit, and as a helpful reference point, I placed a green dot on my temp gauge so it's easier for y'all to see. 
It'll take some time for your egg to level off of that 250 mark, and just be patient in your adjustments. A good rule of thumb is to almost completely close your airways down once the temp is about 20 degrees beneath your target, then tweak and fiddle until it's locked in. After hitting your target temperature, place your brisket in the egg where the large, fattier point muscle is facing the back. Also, I'm smoking my brisket fat side facing up, but you're welcome to try either way because I'm not touching that argument with a 10 foot pole. Now just keep an eye on your egg, ensuring it stays at 250. We'll continue to smoke this brisket for a number of hours until the internal temp in the brisket starts to level off, and that usually happens around 150 to 160 degrees. So it's been about four hours and the internal temp of the brisket hit 160 degrees and then stopped rising altogether. This is what's called the stall. Somewhere around the 150 to 170 degree mark, brisket temps just flatline and sit for hours on end like that. If you don't know it's coming, it'll absolutely drive you nuts. Once that stall hits, there's three general things you can do here. One, ride it out. Don't open your egg and just keep smoking. This will by far be the longest cook time of the three options. Another big risk in this method is ending up with an overall dried out brisket. Number two, you can wrap your brisket in heavy duty aluminum foil and put it back in the egg. The foil wrap will heat up the brisket quickly, get you out of the stall and have an overall much shorter cook time. The main con with foil wrapping most people experience though is that it'll also get pretty steamy in that foil which sometimes negatively affects your bark presentation. Finally, number three, you can wrap it in unwaxed butcher paper and put it back in the egg. This is the middle ground of the three options. The paper will help build heat and get you out of the stall faster than leaving it as is. But unlike the foil, the paper is a bit more porous, allowing moisture and smoke to continue to pass through. This won't be the fastest method to a finished brisket, but it'll help speed things up considerably compared to just letting it roll. And you'll still get a nice crispy bark. None of these methods are wrong in my opinion. I think it's more a point of how much time do you have for your cook and what end results you're really focused on. This time around, I wrapped in butcher paper. I wasn't so pressed for time that I needed to use tin foil to speed things along, so I opted for that middle ground that sped things up out of the stall, traps some moisture, but generally ends with a nice crispy bark. After the wrap, close the lid and keep smoking your brisket until its internal temperature hits 200 degrees. It's been eight hours since we wrapped and my brisket is finally easing up to that 200 degree mark. Once it hits that temp, grab your brisket off the egg and head on inside. The overall smoke time for this brisket lasted 12 hours. These times vary from brisket to brisket, but I hope that's a helpful reference point when planning. Also, beyond hitting the target internal temp at 200 degrees, make sure your brisket is probe tender before taking it off. That simply means that your probe or a toothpick should slide with little resistance into the meat when you poke at it. So your brisket hit target temp and it's off the smoker. Now what? Well, that all depends on when you're ready to eat. Smoking a brisket rarely lines up perfectly with plans, so there's a few different ways of stalling for time. First off, if you have a group staring at you right then and there ready to dig in, rest that brisket for a minimum of one hour on the counter. Do not rush that rest period. Letting the brisket rest is almost as important as all the time you just spent smoking it. If your party isn't ready to eat until later, you can also either toss it in an oven set to warm or wrap it in a few towels and stuff it into a cooler. Both methods will help keep that brisket at a ready to eat temp for a number of hours. Just make sure to keep your temperature probe in the meat and never let it fall below an internal temperature of 140 degrees. Now the time has finally come to carve into your brisket. As far as knives go, I typically use a long serrated bread knife for slicing or a long general butcher's knife. Pretty much anything long enough to get across the meat in one slice is ideal. You wanna to remember to cut into your brisket against the grain of the muscle. And there's two different muscles, the flat and the point. They both have different grain patterns, so we'll be slicing the two sections very differently. First up is the flat. I like to slice off a corner as a chef's treat before carving out that long slice. It's a great little quality check piece where you can look for the smoke ring and overall moisture, which it looks like we knocked out of the park on this brisket. Also, the bark had a great dry crunch to it and held on to a ton of smoke flavor. Long story short, I was very happy with the results of this brisket. When slicing the flat, try and keep your slices about as thick as a pencil. If the meat turned out a bit too dry, you can always cheat a little bit and make them thinner. 
or the other way around, if the meat came out a little bit too wet, just adjust your slices to be a tad thicker. Unless you're serving the entire brisket in one sitting for a big party, just cut off what you're putting on a plate and keep the rest of the brisket whole. This will help reduce some moisture loss and ensure your leftovers have a little bit more mileage in them. This brisket, and particularly this flat, came out perfect. The slices were extremely tender, and they didn't fall apart or crumble with gravity, but if you gave them even the slightest tug of pressure, they'd just melt away. Now let's move on to slicing the other section of the brisket, the point. Right here, you can just make out where the two muscle groups overlap. Depending on preferences, you'll want to slice the point off either mostly just as the point or cut it further in the middle where it's half point and half flat. Either way, like I mentioned before, the grain in the point runs a different direction than the flat. So after slicing it off, turn the piece of meat 90 degrees and then you can start making slices for your guests. The point is a much fattier muscle and a little unruly to get thin slices out of it. I typically make a handful of slices for guests and then take the majority of the point and chop it for chopped beef sandwiches and tacos. Another great option is making burnt ends out of the point, but that's a whole different video. After 13 hours, a whole bunch of patience, and a little bit of salt and pepper, you're left with one fantastic piece of beef. I think brisket perfectly represents Texas barbecue, where beef is king and we let the meat speak for itself. That'll do it for this recipe and thank y'all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you're king brisket of your neighborhood and how you go about making yours. For those of y'all still learning how to smoke brisket, I always try to be available to my viewers, so don't be shy in leaving a quick question. If you're new to the channel, I hope I've been helpful in sharing my perspective, and please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more great content to come. Alright y'all, take care.